I'm a bit tardy today because I'm trying to sort out. Oh my goodness me, what's happened? Um, someone's wet the bed. Everyone's in. Oh, 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 oh. Today. Oh, I woke up, I think, in a minute. <laughs> Time to go to the lavatory or not? No, better not. It's not very professional, is it? It's not very professional. Um, oh, not got many. Mandy, I didn't think we would have because I've been a bit tardy today. I sort of, sort of, sort of, sort of can't speak. Like, blur, blur, blur. I tried to sort out the groups with and, and do me admin and do this and do that and that the other and this. And um, so I wasn't going to come on this morning because I've got one later. So really, this is a bit of an extra, a bit of an extra. So I thought, oh, you won't mind me being a bit disorganised. Well, more than normal. So, what am I looking for? I don't really, I don't really know. Where did it go? If you look my body, everything's the same. Come and check and let me know. 
Okay, right. How are we doing? I'm going to put some lights on, guys, because I think it looks a bit... I am incredibly lucky that Mark allows me to make a complete mess in the house for work and uh, I'm now back down on in the living room making another mess but it, it's really important that I get my house back for some sort of normality not that there is any in this situation at the moment but I'm just trying to I want a place where I can go that's not full of art stuff. Not that I don't love it. It just it takes over your bloody life, doesn't it? Your whole life is sort of saturated by it. Now, I don't think we're going to get many more than the 26 we've got in, which is pretty well for us. But then we'll, we'll get loads later. Hi, Liz. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Kim. Hi, Louise. So... I didn't finish my Moogle yesterday, but what a background that looks. But I just wanted to show you, people were really interested in the harmonious colours. I mean, five went straight away and went on the course. Um, and it is, it's going to be really beneficial in the sense that I did some actually, just to show you about how colours go together. Um, and it's like certain colours I wouldn't have put together and I really like the impact they've got together. So, regardless of what these are, I can put down what I've told you. But you can see how this one is jarring. But if I put another colour with it, it would look good. It would look right. So, Alexa, level two. Oh, that is level two. Alexa, level one. That's better. Right, so I'm really interested in this harmony, and it is, it creates a great harmony within yourself as well, because the harmony bit is where you think, yeah, I actually quite like those colours. Those colours work well. I like that. I like this. So, hello, Philippa. Hi, Asa. Um, hi, Mary. Hi, Jane. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Sue. Hi, Julia. Hi, Yvonne. Oh, I'm all right. Hi, Laura. Hi, Michael. Tricia. Hi, Claire. Denise. It's really nice to be in the room. Now, I'm just going to let everybody settle down with what they've got. You can do whatever you want, the ironing. As long as you know that you've got time set aside. So I'm just messing about. And it's funny really because I like spreadsheets as well. Sad art. Hello Carol. So these are the like sheets I'm designing for the colour harmonies. And I really love the way they're working out. I, I love how, you know. Sorry, that they're working out, and and uh, it's such a nice thing to do. Just sit there. I'm not too worried about the effects I'm getting in the watercolor, but it was more to do with the actual overall effect of color on color and working together. So I thought I'd do something a little bit different today. Just let me have me a. Uh, Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Right. Okay. You have to excuse me for that. Hello, Malcolm. Hi, Louise. Hi, Karen. Hi, Sue. Hi, Denise. Marjorie. Hi. Right. Okay. I found these like little tester pieces. Now they always go. These are like the little samples I do when I get a sheet of paper. I don't know how big this is. Yeah, you get four out of this. It's not the same paper, but you get four out of these. So I, I tend to cut them down. Because when you just do a bit in the middle, you know, you get, 
you get a new piece of paper that you give it one at kids and they just do one piece the way you say no fill it up and you never so i got to the idea of you know when you're doing if you want to do smaller pieces you can do them mounted like this so we used to call this mounting and and then window mounting would be where you cut an area out of this and then insert that but if you see that's sometimes a bit, a bit more manageable for people to do a moodle than say the whole sheet which is that big you know that's a little bit more to think about isn't it that's a bit more to think about you know stonking good word that Sue. hi Dawn hi Emma stonking it's a great word yeah the stonking so that's a little bit adventurous Break that down into four and then if you wanted to mount them on card or paper or whatever you've got let's say we've got this here then you know two on a page you've got the area around it to do your draw drawings and messages and messages whatever you want research but you've also got your work mounted now so i just thought it'd be a nice little area to show you that you've got um, to mount it now the other thing is when you're doing zentangling which is this is not zentangling because you need to be affiliated right i've got this square now i don't know how big this square is so let me get my trusty ruler it is nine and a half i'm presuming by nine and a half why it's nine and, why do people to cook things like that why not just do nine oh thank you karen i really do appreciate that it makes a big difference to me to know that people are enjoying it i know when people come in the room later on they really have a good time and that that makes everything for me so what i'm going to do is i've just found this now i'm not saying that you've got to do this but what i like about this is i'm just going to draw around this now this could be let me just show you something oh that's so rough now this was like Two seconds ago, I thought I'm using these because I don't want to waste them. But I've also got a coaster. So you could do a coaster size, you know. You could do anything in these. But I think if I have a size like that, I would tend to draw on that and then write on that. Or I could have it that way. But either way, I could put a little hole in that and have it as a, you know, a thought moodle. Now, the other thing that I like to do, I'm going to rub that out, is I cut these up even more. And then... You know in april people are doing a doodle a day well or a prompt today well you could do your own and it could all be, be a moodle a day keeps a doctor away so something that size and then split up let me explain i thought is manageable so how big is this so we make it into Hang on, A4, A5, A6, A7, or maybe A8. And it's basically that in four. And each one, we do a little one pattern. It's not a Zentangle, it's a Moodle. And we make a whole like um you don't have to do it small you can do it bigger but we make like a carousel of them and we put a ring on them or we'll end up putting a little putting them in the binder so that we can or get your cinch or whatever it is and make a little book and you could have your moodle book joanne sharp did this many 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 years ago and i and one of the classes but hers was to draw um five leaves a day or, or five petals a day and I th although i'm not nicking that idea it's got to be said that anybody who does that is they're all similar aren't they so but i i would like to do that for april i'm not too sure at, at how many people would like to join in but it could be part of my today's moodle on my live is we're going to spend five minutes doing that hello sally that sounds like a sale i like the idea
but I think it's, I like the idea, Karen. I like the idea. It's exactly what I've just said, um, but maybe not. Like that sounds like a, a sale, doesn't it? Like so, I'm thinking like just creating. And then, you know, the rings you get, just put a little ring through them so that you've got lots of ideas. Oh, you'd love to join in. Oh, that's good. Okay. Okay. Shall we set it up then? Okay, that sounds good. It might be an idea like Karen's just said to do it in May and then it's not overpowering anybody else's or, you know, you're trying to interfere with anybody else's, but it also starts with an M. So, right, let me write it down on my little list. Uh, this is my little list, so... I think I might like, I like the word either mindful moodle in may or moodle may's mindful moodle or month of mind mindful moodles something like that yeah right okay so we'll go for it then so we also i, I might do it on me on the thing and sign everybody up you know sign it up on my website so that it's like Share it and then we could get me a website because I want to do more on my website and less on the Facebook group so that you people um, who I do appreciate get more content and you love like other things that you can do and work free workshops and things on my website. I think that might be a nice idea. So here I've got this one. Now I'm going to do a small one and I'm going to do lots of different um, elements but I'm going to do what we call an abstraction, right? So I'm going to look at a piece of work and then take it. Yeah, Mindful May. That's a good one, isn't it? Mindful Moodle May. Meaningful Moodles. Yeah. May's mind. Exactly. It's a great little. So Karen's idea of May is a good one. So we'll go with that one then. Yeah. Thanks, Karen. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to do what we call an abstraction. An abstraction is where you take a piece of work and you subtract or take away. And that's the way I used to explain it for school. So let me write it on the back of here. So let me just show. So the word sub stupid thing. The word subtract. Okay. Is very similar to the word abstract. Okay, so subtract, subtract is take away. So you're taking away part. So abstracting is taking away as well. You abstract something, so you take something away. So people, when they say abstract, they don't always realise that it's subtract. If you think of subtract, then it's easier to remember. So that means take away. So you isolate. isolate the idea the area yeah isolate the idea and area and enlarge or re draw okay so how does that work how does that work dead easy so let me draw something. Right, I've got this picture here. Where is it gone? There it is, this picture here. So the easiest way of doing it is to create a viewfinder, all right? So creating a viewfinder is so simple. You get a piece of card that you don't use or you're not going to use, and you create a viewfinder. Now, I'll show you how I do one. So say I'm using this as my viewfinder. Oh, I'm sorry, I've cut my finger. Say I'm using this as maybe I'll use this side. So I'm just going to cut out. So I draw that. Okay. Then I might do another one. This is a proper lesson, this, so I'll have to stop this because people don't want lessons. Right, so I've got an area 
or a, 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 a measure it. So if we want something like one in, we'll have it five, five, and then five across. So you can measure it out and then you cut it. So then if you don't want that, or you don't want that sort of structure. Oh, you haven't missed much anything. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed that. So I've got a piece of scrap paper here, okay? Now, I'm just going to do this really willy-nilly. But if you don't want to cut, that's fine. If you want to rip, that's fine. If you just want to fold something in half, and then chop a window out okay so i've now cut my window out so that is my viewfinder okay so anything within there so abstract so we've got this massive image but i don't want it all i want to abstract an area so i look for the area that i want okay so i like that okay so you look at the area, you can go all over willy-nilly, get your books out, get your, your all the stuff that you have drawn, whatever, a picture. It could be anybody's picture. You could go for a book. You could look at some of your doodling and you just look at what you've, done, you've got there. So then if you think that your piece of paper is that hole there. Now, I must admit, that's a rectangle, so I would make sure that this, would be the area I used all of it. If I was going to do that, I would do, say, I know this might not look like one, but this may be, yeah, that's a better square. So if I wanted to draw a square, so that really helps if that's the same shape. So top one, that would be that shape. That one would be the square I've drawn. Does that make sense? So you look for the area that you want. Quite like that one there, actually. Because you tend to go for this. That's nice, though. Right, okay. So then what you do is keep that. Because then what you can do is isolate an area that you don't want. But that gets a bit convoluted, so I'm not going to do that. So let's look at this. Okay. So looking at that there, that's my square. So it's dead easy to do. I don't want you to overthink this. It's easy to overthink it. So my square is that square. So I look at it, and there, and there, your first marks. Now you can just do this straight off. They're going to be a circle. So I'm going to draw the circle in like that. And you can see it just pops down here and here. So then, now if you feel that that's not working for you because it's a circle, get your circle thing on it and you can change it up a bit. And make it circle if you wish. Do you know what I mean? It's up to you. I'm going to rub them lines out because I'm going to do it that way. So then I look at that and I think, right, I've got a line coming up here. I'm going to point to everything I'm drawing. That line, okay, is there. The next line, there. The next line is there and there. So I look at it over halfway. It's about right. And that line and that line and then a bigger square. No, nope, that's a bit bigger. So here I've got a wobble on the line there. That's one colour. It's got a little bit of a pattern there. This one is the second one along and it's got like a circle on it there. This one's got lines. This one's got big circles in it. This one is the opposite way. I think I need, need to, now this is where I realise I need to take that down a bit because it's just before, I've put it on the halfway, can you see there, and it's not there, and it's just before it, so 
that's it and then that is the opposite lines of that one do you get me there and then i've got another one with bobola lines on excuse me that's my tummy right then we've got a line in it is a bit wiggly this is only a like a little i might even finish this because i really like it so i've got that wiggly line there and it's got a bit of a wiggle on it this one here comes here it's got two lines there and this one is quite a big one but that needs to come down here a bit so. right this is abstraction so what i've done is i've taken my main area yeah claire you can do anything like this right so that is overpowering to recreate that but i'm ha quite happy to recreate something like this so that one is i'll never get it right per se but it's about there isn't it so that area there is that so let's do another one so let's do that one okay so i'm looking for areas like i like that one there can you see it i like that one there so i'm going to put my page there and i'm going to draw it there. the first thing you notice let me just draw on it what to show you the first thing you do is get your lines right so here and here are where the circle comes you've got one point there and another point there which is that and you've got this here well, basically if you think that you're drawing lines so you draw lines like that so you know that that's there and that's there you've got a circle there so you, you sort of get any idea of it so here once you've got your plot lines which is what i call them you basically start to draw so about here and again it comes all the way over if you want to use a compass that's fine okay i think i've moved a bit here yeah thought i had so it needs to come a bit higher which is cool draw lots of lines don't rub out rub out later don't rub out before so now i can see i've got one there a roundy one this roundy one here sort of comes here and there so I'm learning from this that I need to make these lines a little bit bigger. So that's there. And then I've got one, two, three. One, two, three. Now I'm being really rough with this because I want it to be. I don't want it to be perfect. I've got like a sequin there. So I'm adding it there. I've got a sequin. Oh, I've got another circle that comes underneath that phallic shape. One there. And then here, I'm making this up now. Well, I'm not making it up, but I'm just so I know some of you do it while we're doing it together. And some of you do it later so this is a bit of both really you could choose to do both if you want to do it now and do it later whatever but now we've got another abstraction so then in in between all this we've got patterns now when you're drawing this what you can do is just draw a pencil line around your square like that oh but when you do that you can rub it out later but you can you see it's not clear but by keeping your paper on it is clear now there's different ways of doing it if you do it with a black page you can, it's clear doing it white page it's clear but now i'm going to put the lines on so what you can do is forget about the what you've just been using and use a bit more sort of intuition with it so let's go for the first line what I mean by that is do it a little bit 
more freely. Now you can get your page out and just say right okay that does look a bit dodgy that so but if you're not bothered then just put these lines in as is so that you're actually although you're creating something that's very similar to what you did it's not actually exactly the same because you put in your own little twist on it then And that's good because you're making it your own so now I'm just going to do it so although I'm drawing the lines I'm not sticking to this bit rigidly because I'm now making it fit this which is what, which is what I want can you see it's now making sense because I'm now making the shapes fit I'm adding a little bit more so you're not only are you taking away an element but you're also adding to it because you put in um maybe you know stuff that isn't there if there's parts you don't like you don't put them in simple as that if there's parts that now are much bigger than when you see them on here oh, so sorry about my finger when you look at them on here i don't even know where it was where was it up here Doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. Is it there somewhere? There. Oh, I don't know. Was it like that? There. Was it like that? It was, wasn't it? So if you look at that, and you look at that, there's another thing you can do. You can create windows so that if you could do that like this, what I'm doing with the colour and, and you just cut out one or two of them you can pick out areas it's so cool to watch absolutely Linda as long as that's perfect if that's the way you learn as long as we don't spread it on and sort of say right okay I'm doing this as my own I, I, I'm quite happy for anyone to do what they want as long as they don't share it as their own that's happy but that's fair enough isn't it I won't share your stuff so you know so in here, I might not have a line, like there's a line there, can you just see it? It's quite small. You can't see it, I'm sorry, I focused it on it being down there, so you won't see it much there, but a bit line there. But when I've enlarged that now, it's quite big, so I can put elements in there that I wouldn't have been able to fit in there. So if you think, well, that's not quite right to the picture, it doesn't matter because the sense of proportion has changed too. So... Now what I'm going to do is, if I've made a cod wallop, as you know, these lines sometimes you get a little bit out of control. Make them into your work. Make the work fit your lines. Your It's your work, it's your control. Don't try and fit everything in. So if it's a bit wobbly, I actually prefer that. Hi Andrew. So we've got this pattern now happening. So if I take out the main elements of what I've drawn with a pencil I've now got the bare bones with a pen I can add or take away as much as I want so we have got and there you could put so for abstract and just my little way of so I, I like to write down what I do and sometimes and then I, I oh, write down what I do and then I know what I've done. So I've got that one. So now let's look at this one. This one was done in a rush, but I don't care. I quite like it when it's done in a rush. So this is where there we go. I feel much more better now. The lines will be different as well now was so focused then I was rushing and had forgotten that I wanted to enjoy it so now perfect not perfect circle I don't want one of them but there's much more softness to the line so let's do this 
take that away if you if you're getting you like it michelle you'll love it once you get into it seriously if you take a picture of anybody of an artist's face and you section it up um a painting or a portrait if you then if you then section it up that's how people draw that's how you get your shape right on anything if you want to draw a picture i want to draw that if i was doing it i would divide it into nine lines say nine squares maybe more and then i'd do a page twice the size of this and put nine lines on that and then anything in that on that in that nine boxes sorry and then anything into and then this would be nine boxes so anything in box one would be in box one and then you enlarge it that's the way you enlarge your work so here so you can see i'm just now i've abstracted it from the image i'm now making this image fit purpose not the purpose of that the purpose of this so i'm enlarging things to make them fit better and I'm making a new piece of work it looks boss eyed now doesn't it so a new piece of work changed it slightly if you wish you can get your stencils out So here, if I want to, I can then go in with a perfect circle just to, you know, bring some sort of more shape to that. So here, can you see? So you bring in some, that, that back in. here let's go for this and when I'm drawing this I'm looking at the relationship of that line not this line so I'm looking at that line and I'm going right okay and then I'm looking at this line and I'm going right okay relationship to that line goes like that that relationship not this one and then I drew the other ones in haste now I can draw them in a better sort of ratio and size and everything and then put in the ones that I need. But the idea is not to pay too much attention to absolute measuring details in, in, in the abstraction. What you're actually doing is just making a new piece actually. You're actually making a new piece that has been abstracted from are oh, you bum? That was meant to be abstracted from another piece you've done to make a new piece. Now I made the right balls of that. So what I've done is I've made it into three, which I really like that. So here, let's look at some of the additives we've got on the sheet. Not on them, this bit, on these bits that I've added. Yeah, I like the element of. I'm not loving this, so I'm going to make that into a wibbly line. There we go. Not liking that one, because it looks like an eyeball. So let's make it into a wibbly line. There's always ways. Perfect. I like them now. It has more meaning. It fits in with that, that and that. Okay. So the next one is let's put these in. So we can't see the bend on that. Look at the relationship to this. Try and keep equidistance. So we've got that there. Uh, do another one. I felt my shoulders go right up then. So I need to breathe out when I'm doing it. So now I know that's it. So we've got really funky designs from this one that I've not finished. Exactly, Yvonne. Hello, Susan. 
Oh, no problem. I don't mind sharing. I love sharing. Now, everybody was interested, not everybody, I do beg your pardon, but a lot of people were interested in the harmonies of colour, colour harmonies, whichever you way. I often speak like Yoda, so you'll have to forgive me, but people who know me already realise that. So now I've taken away the troublesome lines, I can see what else I need to put in, if I need to put anything in. Do I want to put anything in? Do I have to put anything in? And the answer is no, you don't. I'll put some colour in now if you wish. So we've got two really different pieces, enlargement. One's bigger than the other because it's a bigger area. Abstraction, taking away. Now you look at it and you're adding your own. You know, these become pieces of work in their own right. People wouldn't realise unless they really looked that it was from that. They would think that this was from totally different images. So that's how a lot of people create series of works. It's all about using what you've got. I'm going to use in this one a, what I would call, I'm going to get some colours out now. I'm going to use pinks and purples, okay? So it's a bit daunting for people if you haven't got it. Don't worry. I'm not here to just try and sell you stuff all the time, you know. I'm here to sort of hopefully get you interested in it. So I'm going to do a monotone. Monotone is one colour with black and white sometimes sometimes it's just one color so i'm going to use pinks now if i look at my color charts i'm going to be going along this line here okay monotone it's pinks so i'll be picking out the pinks and purples but if you haven't got that all you would need is one color plus black and white okay to create the same effect so you don't need everything i've got make sure your water's clean right let me show you some of this. that wouldn't work that would now there's a distinct reason you can't see the bottom of that because at the bottom of that there's sediment and chalk now that will go into my paint this won't because there's nothing in it now you do need to not use that to clean it Matt's very good at that he usually cleans everything for it's so good he did this last night I do i think i'm of him now well i do always but. so i'm going to go into monotone and i'm looking at one color and ranges therein so let me show you what i mean so I've got lots of colours all set out here, but I've already done my harmony colours. So I've already made a mark of like the ones I like, which go with which. So I'm going to go with purples and pinks. So the first thing I do is, that's a red. Okay? I love it. So, clean your brush. Let's go for the next colour, which is another one. That's a red beautiful the tones of one colour now believe it or not that's purple some of you may see it some of you may not depending on your eyesight or what you see that's a red so you can see as a family of colours I don't particularly like that one because I think that is too um, blue so what i would have to do is get a red see what's this one see this is a pink now if i didn't have the right color and i wanted to create what have i just dropped there i wanted to create a darker version what i would do is get that and that and maybe a bit more now can you see that now goes That's warmer than that. That goes with that. That is one of the cups. Does that make sense? Right. That's what I'll teach you in the harmonies. But well, I'm not going to go into it now because it is a lesson and it is expensive, I know. No, no it's not expensive for the, the amount of work you get in it, but it's more expensive due to the admin cost that the blooming doing. So what I'm going to do is, I've got two, it makes sense if I'm going to do monotone, a bigger version that I do this for you. So I'm going to look at the colours that I've already got and I'm going to think, right, okay, I'm going to move in on um, purples and pinks, I think. So I'm going to start with a very light pink.
loads your brush do you like that mm, yeah i like that it's a bit wishy-washy too much water on my brush i should show you how to use your brush properly really. i can't believe it but that's in a blooming lesson itself we used to do it in school show oh hey what's happening show people how to use the brushes i know it sounds daft but it's like people don't realize how to use a paint brush and how to use a, a a pen for drawing or a pencil for drawing it's not how you write that's better right so now what i'm doing is i'm loading some color up this is what we call this is an opera pink one of my favorite colors um so you might find that you haven't got this color so you use whatever color you're using leave that to dry it's a bit wishy-washy yep i know what i want to do now is create this bit here a little bit darker and i haven't got that color to hand so i'm going to make my own so i'm going to put this a little bit stronger same color i don't want to show you the colors you know why i want, don't want to show you the colors it's simply because you'll get hung up asking me what the colors are and i don't want to show you them not because i don't want you to have them i do but it's not about me buying and selling and you buying and selling it's about you get using what you've got so that's the same colour, believe it or not. So now I'm going to go to the dark colour that I had, which didn't really go. And just here, I'm going to mix a little bit of the dark colour with it. there which looked awful so wash your brush clean it but now you go back to your pink and just blend it now you might feel that what you want to do is blend it whilst it's in the palette that's fine blend it in a palette so what i mean by that is so it's a little bit darker now can you see so what i'll do is in the palette i'd get Plastic, plastic, plastic. Right here, I'll use this one. Right in the palette, I'll get my pink. So I'll get my pink out. And then whilst it's still wet here, mix it in there so that I've got that colour, but I've got it to tap. Do you know what I mean? I've not got not mixing it on the paper can you see i'm making it darker i'll just do it for you to show you so now i've got it's a bit watery right so let it be like that. let it settle if you don't like it get a cotton wood you can get pointy ones now or just do that and just take away the excess which is it's a bit heavy. Like that. Because don't forget, I've just done three things on one thing there, so it might be a bit heavy. So you've got now, like, in more of a muted tone, but there's nothing to stop you going back in. Get rid of the water on your brush. And go in with a darker colour so that you can layer. Because if you don't, it does look a bit patchy okay that's a bit better now so okay now i'm going to go with another pink so you need pinks that are going to go with this so we're going to go with let's let's see what this color looks like i need you always should have your let's see that's too red for me so i'm going to go with oh there's a pink here i think that might be yeah that's what that's i know that's blooming thingy now perfect right so this is going to go better with them can you see not them this is where i teach you about the harmonies so i'm going to go in with this here now and again this is all one more or less one or two colors there's nothing um 
to there we go that's better a bit darker so now you've got that aubergine color so I'm, the same color i'm going to lift and i'm going to put here I must admit this is probably one of the best lessons because you get to see so many art tricks with this again here so i'm bringing the color across because you are restricted with your color but it don't mean you can't do it it just means you're restricted with your color always keep checking the colors because they do look very different now if i'd have gone on with that red see that's a purple which is still within the realms of that color but it's not the one i want it's not the one i want is it this one yeah, it's that one so just be wary that you need your little color charts with them now i've got this one which is oh that's a dark red i can't use that one see that that one i want to go with this one you see that's a brownie red so that wouldn't work I'm look in this one pink's quite hard to find actually the pinks i've got are here pinks and mauve this is mauve This is permanent rose. Permanent rose. We've got professional and graduates. And I've got where's the other ones to show you the pinks? This one. That's a mauve. Where's the pinks gone? Come on with this. There it is. I think this one was a fiver. Opera rolls, fiver. Not cheap. But I want it, so it's worth it. So these are the colours that I have in my little. But if you think they're all one colour, they're just derivatives of one colour. So that's what I mean about monotone. It can be so many different things, so many different people. So I do have my pinks here, so I put a bit there and a bit there and these are the mauves okay and that and that are the reds so i don't go with the reds because that would be with the other one that would be with them get me there shut up and get on with it right so this has got a lot of water retention in it i'm just going to get this pink by adding a little bit more red I'm just going to put a little wash go away oh my neck that's right the life for a minute now the only reason i'm putting this wash on is so i can see where the background is now what i mean by that what do i mean well you start to sort of lose track of what's the wood and what's the trees so if you know where the background is then that's half the battle, you know. You know that that's the background. And you can put layers on, like, because there's not a lot of colour left, but there's a lot of water in it. So I'm just pulling the water out and then adding it to create like a watercolour effect so that I've got depth of colour within this. So I've got like darker bits and oh, oh, oh light a bit see that's what i mean you get carried away so now i've got this this is a monotone okay one color and derivatives thereof so just going to move these over because i've already got these out um now i'm going to look for something that would perhaps give it a little bit of power now this is a grape color so let me check it yeah, it's warm. It'll go. So this is a grape colour. And I'm just going to go each side. It's like a purple. I can give you all... Oh, what did you do that for? I can give you all the names of the paints I use. But that will not always tell you how I've used them and where I've used them. It's just... I'm just taking it off there. So I'm going to go in quite heavy, just on one side. I 
Okay, take the brush, take the water off, uh, take the excess off, clean it up a little bit, and now blend it out. Now, I, I do know because I was faffing then that I will have some lines, so I'll show you the little tricks. So I'm adding the water now, I'm hopefully allowing it to soak through like that looked awful but this is where you get a little bit of the color you can mix it in your palette you can get the color you used before and then a little bit of the color you've got and just start to blend it out that's better now one of the things, the ways of getting around it is to keep going, not too much because you'll pill the paper. And by pill the paper, that means it will come up a little bit. So what you need to do is just reactivate where the dark was. My mum used to say it's like leaving a tide mark when you've had a wash, which I was always doing. And she said, you've just looked at the water, you've not had a wash. You just glanced at it. Oh, by the way, in the Fantastiche later, I'm going to be making another tag with my uh, Just Lou collection. So if you fancy it, you all, you're all welcome. Join the group. It's live in the UK at 6 and live in the Netherlands at 7. Can you see how it's starting to build up now? I need to let it dry and to let the paint settle so to speak so I'm going to now take that colour that I've used here and I'm just going to put it in here so I'm taking it around the edge and depending on where you use your paintbrush is where you'll have your control so if you're using it here you're going to have fine control. If you're using it up here, you're going to have free control. That means it's going to be a lot looser. Whereas if I do that, it's more like writing with it. So you can control smaller sections with it. So because I've got this now, I need to make sure that them, them two don't match. It's a bit like when you was a kid and you used to say, right, that colours can't go with that one. And that one can go with that one. This colour is a mauve. Now this is like a pink and a red and a blue. Now this is a Windsor and New and mauve. Just showing it. Up. Now because it use a lot of it, it's worth it. I buy a big tube. Now the studio light paints, I have to say, they've got the pinks and the mauves in. Janini's has, um, Jane Davenport's has, I think some of Marlene has, Art by Marlene has as well. So you've got a real collection. The Paul Rubens do them all. Thank you. So I've got some colour running, but I'm not too worried about that. This is where you can add your own, make your own colours up now. So if I get a little bit of the opera pink that I was using before, because I like it, and I'm going to add a little bit more purple to it. So you only need a couple of colours. You don't need a, a ton of colours. And then we match it up and see, right, well, is that different enough? No, it's not. So do I add more purple? Let's see. Is that different enough? No, you see, that's similar to that. So this is when you can add a little bit of blue, but don't go bananas with that, because the blue will come. See, I'm loving it. Right, putting more blue in it. It's getting darker. I'm liking that. Don't go too mad with it, though, like I've just done. Perfect. So you can add as much what you need to test. And this is the paper that we're using. And you think, oh, that's not working, but... That, if you roll over it and draw it over it, becomes very um, great background, believe it or not. So here I've got a dark colour, just going to try. See, that's too much like that one, so it's going to come in this one. 
But even though, I just hope you can see. It's slightly different. Load up the colour, let it do what it wants to do. Remember you've got another one here. What you can do now is think, right, well I've got these colours here. Do I bring it in here or do I make this one the dark one? My advice would be to make this one the dark one and then light round it with a light pink because you've got a dark version there. So you sort of look round, well, where else can I use this colour? So monotone does not mean black and white only. It means of one colour or mono as in one. So mono. So now I'm looking at that. I really like it, but I want it darker. So I'm going to add some more blue. Now the problem is, will this make it too blue? Or will it still go? So, oh, now we're getting a rise. Oh, look at that one. No, I'm loving that. So here, you'll get to learn how much you need of a colour and where to use it. So if you see me dipping in colours, don't worry. Um, I will show you how to do that. Right, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush now, only because it'll just make my life a lot easier. And I'm going to go in with this purple that I've got. I just see, just, just see. Yeah, right. So I'm going to go in and I'm just going to outline. Not all of it. Do you get me? So I'm creating my own. You can do it. I want to show you both ways. You can do it so that you just do outline and leave the colour, or you can go all in and add the colour. Now, I prefer it that way. But it's either or. Now, these are blue purples, can you see? So, you're going to get a different colour, a different... So, I'll put one there, and I'll add a... two blue now, can you see? So, you need to take that off. See the, the blue under it? Oh no, I can wipe that off. Um, you can see the blueness of it, the undertone. So I'm going to warm it up again. Now it's gone, it's not as blue. But I need to put that back in now with that. Right, I've decided to put the blue in. I warmed it up with the red, the mauve straight away. There we go. I love that. So I've warmed it straight up with the mauve, and in here, I'm going to drop in that, and then drop in that. So we get a cool. It's the same colour basically, but it one's cool. And one's warm. So it's I, I love colour, but I love mastering colour mastering colour so that I've got control. Here I'm going to put the same colour in. This brush I've let it if you let it lie in water, what'll happen is the filament at the end goes all kinky. You get like a hook. Don't use it when it's like that unless you're not worried about detail because it won't work properly. Right, so now I've got that, got monotones of that. I'm going to just put a water down. And that mean, and when I mean water, I mean just that. So I've just got that like foundation, as I say. Then I'm going to drop in a little bit more colour. Now I'm going to separate all these, so I'm thinking ahead here, separating all these. Now that's too red, because I've put too much red in, but 
I'm going to separate all these with a pad. Ooh, I'm a bit pear-shaped here today. Right. That's better. So the majority of this will be... That looks really crappy, doesn't it? So I'm just going to pull... That's better. So now what I've done is I've got these lovely warm colours, these cool colours, and I'm just sort of thinking, right, okay, I really like this warm colour, so I'm going to make a little bit more of it. And it's, um, I think it's a derivative. This is a derivative from an opera. So I've mixed a little bit of the blue, got a lot of the opera pink with it. Now here, I need to, now I've hit the wrong colour, but if I just show you how you do it, if you blend it in, you can't see it anymore, you get me? So don't worry if you hit the wrong colour. So here we've got monotone colour, we're going to go in with it. The very dark purple. But when this is all dry and I put pen work around it, you'll see it's totally different, totally different from um, what it looks like now. Totally. So let's go for another colour family. I'm going to be quick because I'm enjoying it. So let's go for um, reds and yellows then, brights and colds. So I'm going to go in with a yellow and I'm using a, a lemon so it's a cold yellow so you can see that and I use a studio light warm yellow and it instantly starts to look warmer so that's more like a, a yolk yellow You see, so I'm going to use yellow, leaving it like that because I don't want to go too far with yellows. But if you look at all my yellows, you'll just see that there's hundreds of them all in there, yellows in there, yellows everywhere coming out of your ears, oranges. Um, so I've got this color, so I'm looking at maybe. A yellow orange now this is more of an orange color with more red base so if I want that color what I could do is just add that and I've made it a different colour altogether now. So if I put down again, like I said, this is like a burnt orange. I'm using watercolour to make it lighter now as a base. Like I did the background. Okay, so I've got some colour add added here. I'll change the colours in a minute. Okay, so we've got that really light, quite nice colours. So let's go in for a little bit of the light yellow here. Can you see how it warms it up? Now I'm going to go in with a little bit of the... Excuse me. Lemon yellow. It's cooler. Not as bright. More yellow. 
now I'm going to use a dark yellow and I could use a, a, that orange that we had before just to blend it out so just a little bit in there more orange in here So it's already had one layer of orange, it's got two layers now, so now we can add some more of the darker yellow. So here I'm going all of them darker yellow. And then I'll add a little bit of the red with it, which is quite a bright red. So a little bit of the red to make it a little bit more. This is like a poppy red. Which I can't have it on its own because it's way too bright. So if I put that down first and then go back in with a colour, I can now, wait, see what I mean? That's straight away, you know. That colour is not mess. You're not messing about with that one. So, depending on the strength of your paints as well. There we go. Take that off. Not a lover of it. And I'm going to put some of the orange back in, so it's warmer. Ah, that's better. I'm happy with that. See. So here we're going to look at. And change brush because I'm getting too much water everywhere. I don't need to do that. It's going over it. So here I've got a really dark orange. So this would be more like a cadmium orange. So I'm just having it a flat wash, meaning I've got no distinct shading with it as well I'm just putting a flash flat wash down I'm not liking that because it's too too flat but now I add the, that color in it I've warmed it up now and it makes a better match so again it's the same color you're just adding to it so I'm going to go in here so in here I'll put a, that orange again more concentrated This is the same. This is a burnt orange and this is a Sennelier orange. It's one of my favourite oranges. Um, if it's acrylic, I do like indigo blues. Acrylic orange, that's amazing stuff that. So now what I'm going to do is add a bit of red, but, but cadmium red, in that it's not orange. It's an orange red and not a thingy red. Um, let me explain. It's not a blue red like a crimson, it's more like a pillar box. There we go. But you only need a wash of it because if you start to put too much in, it ends up looking bright red and you don't want to do that, it's monotone. So here I can add this into the white there to give it definition. But I'm also just knocking that edge off the white. I don't want the white showing so much. And I can just put it round here. If I wish, if I wish, don't have to. Yeah, I'm going to put in a bit of the, the red or orange. Perhaps over all of it, actually. And then mix the colour on it. And then come with a darker colour. Excuse me, I've got an itch. In the middle. Maybe around here. This is the third coat now, I think. Add any little bits that you think might benefit from it. So up here it'd be like brights. 
I'm even going to put a little bit in here actually. So you can see that colour and that colour added together, you get that colour. And then add a bit more to there. What I might do is just add a little bit more while it's still wet. So that you do get a slightly different colour there. There you go, that's a bit better. I'm going to save up here any white bits. Like that. Okay, so we've got monotone. So we've done an orange and a pink and a purple. Well, the pinks are sort of a bluey pink, pinky pink with a little bit of blue. I think the blue, I would say it's more of an accent colour now because it's quite dark. But what you can do is if you're feeling that way and it's not how you want, then when it's dry, um, just warm it up by adding more red to it like that. And you, you see straight away it's not as hard. It's still heavy and I might want to just do that. But, oh, I might want to do that as well. You know, and really lift out the blue. The blue, the, it's a really strange thing that you just go over the top a tiny bit, a weeny weeny bit, and it takes it to another level and or another colour and I don't want that. See that's better for me now. It's a warmer colour. So we've got a red or we've got a yellow orange, we've got pinks. So they're monotones. So that's what you how you work with them. And then the next thing is you sort of look at so that's the next class. I'm not well it's not the next class. That's an idea of when you get let me just show you what I've done so you can see. So it's all about colour like this, colour management. Don't matter if you've only got through, that's all you need. You don't need loads. Honestly, you don't. You work within your, your, your what you've got, your products. So, you know, make your, make your sheets, make these. I can't tell you enough how much these are helpful, like these colours here. I wouldn't have put a purple with that, but I really love it. But it is opposite on the wheel anyway. So, yeah, um, I'm going to have to make a new... Uh, video for some as well because we've had a bit of an accident but hey ho lights you know what I mean it's that's what happens um so hopefully you've enjoyed that as well we've done quite a lot in an hour and a bit um an hour and 20 minutes if you would like to join me later on I'm really looking forward